I am resisting the urge. I won't do it. I'm not going to say the joke. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. I'm just going to pass over it. And we're going to get right into the review and it's going to be proper and official. And apparently all it takes to tame psychos is two fingers. There. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Real quick, guys, I just want to shout out a Patreon supporter of mine, Adam Jinrakai, and his YouTube channel, which is called Adam Jinrakai. Uh, he's a great friend of mine, and he also creates an awesome webcomic called The Shonen Beat, but beyond that, he does some manga analysis style videos, usually on One Piece or Berserk, if you were interested in checking out his YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it if you did, especially if you guys are into One Piece. I know everyone is trying to get me to read One Piece, and I, I swear I will someday. But until then, I think Adam's videos can pretty much cover anything that I could give you in a better way since he's more deeply invested in the lore. Go ahead, subscribe to him, check him out. Try to get him to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're almost there. Really appreciate it if you did so. So thank you guys. Check him out. His link will be in the description down below. You know, this chapter did exactly what One Punch Man needed to do for me today. It made me legitimately laugh. I actually LOL'd. I really did. Truly. Honestly laugh out loud when I read this chapter. I laughed out loud two times. One time was seeing that character use two fingers and then seeing Psycho's face look like this. I know, I'm sorry, all right? The other time was when uh, Forte got hit by the car. I, I laughed my ass off during that scene because we set it up so perfectly in the last chapter where these three heroes went to visit Saitama to kind of curious about his connection with King and kind of seeing what he's all about. And I think that as this arc is expanding and moving forward, once again, for anybody new here, I don't read the webcomic. I just read the Murata version when it comes out and I experience it that way. So I don't know what's coming up in the future. But I like how this arc seems to be exploring the idea of characters being a little bit more interested in Saitama and seeing him for what he actually is. Instead of him just kind of being in the background and being just the Cape Baldy that nobody cares about, now he seems to be gaining a little bit more notoriety or a little bit more curiosity, you know, where we had a mask in the last chapter kind of checking him out and the other heroes and when Genos kind of went to his meeting. So all of that is laying the groundwork for people to kind of maybe understand how great Saitama actually is, which is hilarious that it took 175 chapters before people are starting to take notice. Hilarious. I love it. Um, so at the end of the last chapter, they got these three characters that are trying to like talk to him, talk about their powers, and then Forte is this guy that apparently when he listens to music, it's just sort of like drunken kung fu except with music. So instead of ingesting alcohol, he listens to music, he gets into a groove, and then he can kind of like do all these awesome martial arts techniques in which Saitama, because Saitama is just himself and has no filter, says, well, isn't it kind of uh, silly to kind of build up into a groove like – that's like your opponent isn't going to wait for that right and so he gets pissed off challenges him to a fight and Saitama as he's coming outside we see the monster characters that were with him we have black sperm and the dog character whose name I can literally never remember somebody please put it in the comments and I love how uh Saitama's like oh I got a great idea how about if I win the fight you have to take care of these pets because he's got completely oblivious to the whole idea like he completely forgot that he even had them there and he's like oh yeah you guys are still around he's like oh what am I do <laughs> what am I gonna do with these things all right um oh I could totally pawn them off onto some other fuckers so all right here's the thing how about if I win the fight you gotta take care of these pets knowing full well that obviously he's gonna win but the most hilarious part about it is that it has nothing to do with Saitama I love this is just one Punch Man, classic humor. I love it so much. So he goes out and he puts on the, his uh, headphones. He starts getting into a groove. He starts building up his whatever, his music, you know, technique. And uh, Saitama starts talking to him. He's like, which obviously he can't hear because he's wearing headphones. And he's like, what? And he's like, car. Bam. Because <laughs> it is dumb. It is dumb. Like, it, like, first of all, yeah, building up to a rhythm while your opponent is just standing there. Usually that's not going to happen. Also, you're getting rid of one of your senses the entire way. Like, you can't hear anything around you. You can't hear anything come up, up behind you. You can't hear extra enemies. You can't hear people, uh, you know, what the, they're trying to say and what they're trying to communicate. So, like, the whole concept behind his super ability and what he does is just ridiculous. And I love how it's just kind of pointed out to him uh, so clearly by Saitama and so clearly by just getting run over by a car. But I love that they use that to flow into the next part of the story because it's not just any car that runs him over, it's part of Fubuki's uh, crew, which we saw her sort of on her way at the last chapter. And then that's when this gets into 
what I, I believe is going to be probably the the beginning of the prime storyline of whatever this arc is going to be. So Buki shows up, grabs uh, Saitama, and takes him to this sort of like security facility prison place. All right, so I'm not really sure where we're at. I don't think that we've seen this place before. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we haven't seen like this maximum security prison location before. So I love how uh, also Saitama is the only one wearing a tracksuit. Everyone else is dressed in black and black suits and Fabuki with their black dress. And then there's just Saitama in a tracksuit. Fantastic. But unfortunately, another character shows up at this facility before Fabuki can arrive. And this guy is wearing a pretty cool looking mask. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be set up to be an antagonist moving forward. I know we also have like the Metal Knight potential storyline thing that is happening. So we might have multiple villains. I don't really know what's going to happen with it. What he's here to do seems a little bit more complex than what just this chapter lets on because he starts talking about uh, some experimentation, you know, on people with like psychic abilities and things like that. And it seems like he also has psychic abilities. It seems like he's probably going to be connected to Fubuki and Tatsumaki in some way. Uh, I remember when Tatsumaki was like... Um, you know, she had that flashback of her as a little kid, like was she bearing, being experimented on by this group of, you know, people that research psychic abilities or whatever it is. So this could be something and having psychos here makes sense for that. But I don't know what, what you know, purpose they have. He mentioned some specific name, which causes psychos to kind of like awake and seem a bit fearful of that. Seem like she's kind of like, she knows exactly what he's talking about and something that she doesn't want to be involved in. And considering how powerful she is as a character already the fact that she would be fearful of something means that this is this is legitimate this is huge like there is something really dark going on here with whatever this guy's a part of and uh i was thinking that you know his mask would be part of his persona which it might be but it immediately gets blown off when psychos tries to erupt out of her cell and we see his actual face and he looks like a normal dude he's got like the tat to pattern on his uh, on his forehead so it probably leads into his psychic abilities or whatever he can do but then we go back to Fubuki and we essentially get a flashback in a flashback so we have Fubuki thinking about when she was younger with psychos and apparently she blocked her ability in some way I don't I don't somebody explain that because I didn't really understand that part so they both had psychic abilities but psychos was a little bit too psycho with it and so fubuki blocked it but she really did it for more selfish reasons not really like protecting the planet kind of reason is that why psychos became a monster is that why she agreed to the the deal with god to give her powers or anything like that was that because of that i don't know i need somebody to help explain that without spoiling things but explain that to me but then we go from that flashback into another flashback seeing the fallout of the monster association during that battle at the same time when saitama was um was battling Garo, and uh, we get Psycho sort of facing down with Fubuki, which is something that we didn't see during that battle. So it's interesting to know because Psycho didn't she fight with Tatsumaki for like a dozen chapters? You know, like that was an intense fight, and so now she's throwing down with Fubuki also, which is great to see my girl Fubuki kind of throwing down to actually be able to see her fight. So I'm excited to see that in the next chapter if they continue that, even though it's a flashback. Look, I'll just be, I'm just happy to see Fubuki do anything. All right, when you put Fubuki on the page, like, it just makes me happy. And I'm not going to elaborate on the reasons why it makes me happy, but it does. And I feel like everything is right with the world once more. But I'm excited to see where this goes, man. Obviously, this is a setup chapter, just as all of these have been sort of since the uh, the finale of the Saitama versus Garu fight. Everything else has sort of been building up. You know, we, we're laying the, uh, the breadcrumbs for people to kind of understand what Saitama is actually capable of. We have, uh, you know... We have the two monsters that are kind of infiltrating in as pets <laughs> at the uh, the hero sort of um, apartment complex. We have the Metal Knight thing that's going on there. We have uh, Geno's telling everybody the truth about Saitama. Now we have this psychic research facility thing or this maximum security prison where they're, you know, experimenting on people with psychic powers, which is probably going to play into Fubuki and uh, Tatsumaki's past. So we'll probably learn a little bit more about them during this arc. And then you, have, of course, have Saitama, who's just being himself, which makes everything come full circle and just makes sense. So I thought this was a great chapter. Uh, probably the best chapter since the end of the last arc, like since the Saitama Garu fight. This is probably... Because um, this has all been building, you know, it's all been building on one another. But this one is sort of setting things into motion 
while at the same time was extremely hilarious and i really enjoyed it for those reasons too so have you guys noticed i'm like slowly spinning to the right in my chair okay there we go anyways guys what did you think of this chapter please let me know in your comments down below try not to spoil the web comic but you can explain and expand on a few things that i might uh, need more information to understand other than that guys thanks a lot for watching this video please give it a like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to stick around and see more i am still trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year so if you could help me get there i would very deeply appreciate it but if not that's cool too other than that guys thanks for watching and i'll talk to you next time